studying abroad But you're not sure how and where to go That's why we're here Dream studies abroad To help you out Reaching your goal So many schools from all around the world Are welcoming you with their open doors Live your dreams and travel the world A new journey for the brighter future Let's talk, study abroad today Your dream is not so far Okay, konnichiwa, and welcome to this webinar about studying in Japan. Uh, here you see a lovely street in uh, Kyoto on the way from the Kiyomitsudera temple down to Gion, uh, the old quarters of Kyoto. So it's a really lovely place both to, to study and to visit. Uh, and through the, throughout this presentation, we're going to see different pictures of Japan and talk about studying in Japan in different aspects. Uh, so let's have a closer look at that. Uh, in this webinar, I'm going to start to tell you a bit more about us. Uh, I'm going to talk about what you can study in Japan, the different schools and programs you can attend, costs and scholarships for studying in Japan, visa for studying in Japan, student accommodation, uh, and finally, how to apply and the different steps to study in Japan. And on the picture here on the right, you see my mother-in-law in the background and in front is uh, Sashimi uh, from uh, Japanese Isakaya. So very lovely food over there in Japan. It's one of many good reasons to study there. So my name is Johan Asplund, uh, and uh, this picture actually is off, also taken in Kyoto, just a couple of hundred meters from the other picture you saw, the Sun and Saka path. Uh, and I've studied abroad in five different countries. Uh, I've helped students to study abroad since 2002, and I worked with schools in Japan since 2006. Uh, so I've helped thousands of students to study in Japan. I have a lot of experience with that and I've traveled to Japan. Usually I go there once a year. Now, of course, with the pandemic, it's been a while, but usually I go there quite a lot. And in 2016, I founded Dream Studies, my current company, uh, where we can help you to study in very many different programs and courses, locations in Japan. Uh, so why Dream Studies? Here's our main website, dreamstudiesabroad.com, that I think you all have visited. And this is where you signed up for this webinar. Uh, and at this website, we, site, we offer a lot of free information about studying abroad. Wherever you want to study in the world, we have a lot of articles. We have school databases where you can find like all universities in the UK or in Japan or in Korea or Italy or Spain or wherever. We have articles about how to choose a school abroad, how to fund your studies abroad, how to apply for student visas to different countries and many other things. There's a lot of free information available here. And our help is always risk-free. Our website is open for everyone, free of charge. You never pay anything to us. If we help you to choose a school or in some cases apply to a school, you would still pay directly to the school. You never pay anything to us. So there's never any risk involved by taking our help. Uh, and in Japan, we can help you to choose a school that is suitable for you, put you in touch with them, find one that uh, matches your request, and we can give you more information about studying in Japan, as well as many other countries. And we can also help you with partial scholarships and discounts to schools around the world, including Japan. You almost always need some money of your own to study abroad, but the Dream Studies um, can help you with a lot of different scholarships and discounts to many different schools. So we will have a closer look at that later on in this presentation as well. So what can you study in Japan? Well, Japanese language courses is the foundation for most students who go to Japan. Uh, if you want to study in, within higher education in Japan, in Japanese, you need to learn the language first. Uh, so Japanese language courses are usually the start, whether you want, only want to study Japanese language or whether you want to prefer, prepare for Semongakko, Japanese vocational school, 
or whether you want to prepare for studying in Japanese at a Japanese university. You can also study in English in Japan at universities, but uh, as you'll see later on in this presentation, um, the number of subjects available are much uh, fewer in English. So for many programs, you would have to learn Japanese. And theoretically, you can also go on an exchange semester to Japan from your home university. But obviously, that's not something we can help you with. To go on exchange to Japan, you have to be enrolled in a university in your home country that has an exchange agreement with Japan. So what we can help you with is Japanese language courses uh, and selected courses in English at Japanese universities. So we will have a closer look at this. Um, studying Japanese in Japan, this is what we recommend that you start with, whatever you want to do later on. And there are many reasons for this. Many students who want to go to Japan have a strong interest in Japanese cult culture, whether it's fashion or J-pop or food or anime or manga or uh, martial arts, whatever it might be. And to really enjoy this culture, to understand it, to immerse in it, get to know Japan, Japanese people, Japanese culture, you really need to know the language, experience life in Japan. Maybe you have never been to Japan before, and then it can be a quite big commitment to sign up for a four years bachelor degree. I would recommend that maybe you start by going to Japan for a shorter period of time to get to know the language and get to know the country, especially. Because usually if you imagine your studies abroad, you think of something like this and the reality will be something like this. It might not be worse, but it will definitely be different. So it's better to go there for a while first to get a new country, experience it before maybe signing up for a long program. And Japanese language is a prerequisite for most higher education programs in Japan. And also knowing Japanese makes life in Japan so much easier, whether you just go and order food in a restaurant or especially if you want to find a work in Japan, even if it's just an extra job as a student. If you know the language, you can get much better job, more well paid, more rewarding job. So learning the language is really the key if you want to go to Japan. And there are language courses available at all levels from total beginners to advanced students, but we would recommend if you're if you are a total beginner, start looking at hiragana, katakana, the two basic writing languages before going to Japan. Most beginner classes include these uh, languages for the first couple of weeks. But you know, you come to a new country, there's thousands of impressions, there's thousands of things you want to do, and all of a sudden you should learn like 94 characters in a week or two. Um, that can be quite tough. So if you start learning those, life will be much easier. And you would even be able to read some menus, for example, in Katakana, where they use English loan words and stuff. You could probably figure out what it is if you can read Katakana. Uh, here you see some other lovely Japanese food. The previous picture, by the way, is Inari Shrine. Uh, uh, a fantastic shrine in Kyoto also where they have thousands of these Tori gates basically making tunnels. This picture is taken from Kyoto but, or, or from Tokyo but also lovely Japanese food here. Uh, but we're going to talk about language courses in Japan, a bit more facts about studying language in Japan. To begin with, uh, all Japanese language schools basically offer 20 lessons per week. So you would have four lessons per day on weekdays, usually from nine to one, but they also have afternoon classes from one to five. So basically you would be in school half day, but then Japanese takes some work to learn. So you should prepare to study at least two hours a day, maybe even four hours a day, two to four hours a day, depending on your ambition level, the school you attend and so forth but you still have plenty of time to discover Japan, maybe work a bit extra and have some fun. Uh, course starts on long-term courses in Japan are in January, April, July, and October, with April and October being the big start dates. So if you want to study on a student visa in Japan, these are the four start dates you will have. Uh, but for some short-term courses at some schools, you can start at other dates as well. 
And if you want to study on a visa course, you need to apply at least five months before the course starts uh, in order to yeah, get the application done on time, preferably earlier if you can. And that's primarily for courses that are 20 weeks or longer. We will have a closer look at student visas uh, later on in this presentation. Uh, and the price at Japanese language schools, it's, um, it's not the same at all of them, but it's usually around 800,000 yen for a one year language course. On some schools, it can be closer to 900,000 yen with everything included. Well, except accommodation, but uh, tuition fee, maybe materials, application fee, and so forth. Others can be a little bit cheaper, maybe 740, 750, something, but around 800,000 yen, which is about 7,340 US dollar for one year. And that would be 40 weeks. So you have four weeks, or you have four semesters where each semester is 10 weeks. And then, of course, with some of our agreements, you will be able to get some discount or scholarship to lower this price. But most Japanese language schools will cost something like this. And we can help you to schools all over Japan. Uh, this picture is uh, from a skyscraper in Tokyo, which, of course, is the most popular destination, a world city, one of the biggest uh, city regions in the entire world. I think if you combine Tokyo, Yokohama and the surrounding, you get like 37 million inhabitants or something like that. So you just look out and you see houses everywhere. But still, it's a fascinating city because the air is quite clean and you have many small streets, not at all this heavy traffic as you would associate with a big city and there's public transportation everywhere and there's endless of things to do in Tokyo fantastic city some could be very costly but some can also be very cheap with that kind of mega city you really have very big ranges between the prices activities everything fantastic place to study but maybe can be a bit overwhelming if you're from a smaller place uh, Kyoto, as I already shown you a lot of pictures of, is of course another great option. Uh, the historical capital of Japan, uh, yeah, a really historic city, a bit more manageable size, about one and a half million inhabitants, so more biking distance, sometimes walking distance there, and uh, a lot of living history everywhere. Uh, Osaka, of course, the, uh, it's daytime, the second largest city in Japan, and nighttime is the third largest because uh, Yokohama actually has more inhabitants, but then daytime, Yokohama people go to Tokyo to work while people around in uh, Kansai go to Osaka to work. So daytime, Osaka, Osaka becomes number two. And Osaka, of course, is the heart of Kansai, the second great city area with the surrounding uh, Kyoto, Kobe and so forth. So if you want to go to a really big city, but not Tokyo, then Osaka, of course, is a great choice. Uh, Kobe, harbor city south of Osaka, also a quite lovely place, nature-wise, interesting city, and close again to both Osaka and Kyoto. Um, Nagoya is uh, Japan's fourth largest city, and it's basically right between um, Tokyo and Kyoto on the Shinkansen, the bullet train there. And um, Nagoya, for example, is where they make Toyota cars, among other things. And Nagano, if you want a smaller place, uh, was host for the Olympics, Winter Olympics, back in 1998. It's up in the mountains, more to the west of Tokyo, like um, close to two hours train ride from Tokyo, but perfect place if you like skiing, hiking, and nature and a bit of a smaller city. Uh, Fukuoka down on Kyushu is another very lovely city, a bit more than one million, one and a half maybe million inhabitants by the ocean, uh, Pacific there on Kyushu. And it's, yeah, it's a great city for food, party, shopping, all like that, good size city. So yeah, it's a good option. Yokohama, of course, almost connected to Tokyo, but again, like the harbor city of Tokyo and also very nice cities to study in these days. 
Sapporo if you want something totally different up on Hokkaido, the northernmost island uh, of Japan, another Olympic city. I think it was 1972 or 78, sometime in the 70s, they had Winter Olympics there as well. So another great skiing place and great place for nature. Uh, and basically we have uh, partners, uh, especially for language schools, all over Japan, more or less. So even if you would be interested in maybe Hiroshima or Okinawa or somewhere, we can probably help you out there. So let's look at higher education in Japan. Uh, and for that, we see a high building or a number of high buildings in Tokyo. Uh, Semongakko, I mentioned briefly before, this is uh, vocational schools for subjects like design, manga, music, nursing, etc. These kind of practical subjects uh, are usually taken at Semongakko in Japan, which is more practical schools. And I know many international students are interested in just this kind of subjects, music, maybe some fashion design, theory design, illustration, manga, anime, game design and also nursing, some business subjects, these kind of things, you can all study in a Semangakko. And in Semangakko, they always teach in Japanese. So you have to be quite good at Japanese to study there. Usually they require that you have JLPT level two uh, to study at the Semangakko. Then uh, not all schools uh, actually require you to take the test. It can be enough if you have a diploma from a language school that says that you have achieved GLPT level two. And also your Japanese language school can help you to apply to Semongakko in Japan. Then we have Japanese universities. Uh, if you want to study at university level in Japanese, then you need to have even better in Japanese, usually GLPT level one and or the EDU test, the Japanese university exam. Uh, so you really need a really high level of Japanese, not only to get accepted, but to actually be able to keep up with the, with the tuition, with your classes there. Uh, otherwise there's not much point. So I would say you would need to study Japanese two years in a language school if you're a beginner to prepare for studying at a Japanese university in Japanese language. There are also a few programs taught in English, primarily it's liberal arts subjects like international relations, maybe some business, social science, political science, that kind of subjects. That's what offered at most universities. Then some universities offer more programs, especially at master level. Um, but uh, if you want a big selection of programs, you're better off to study in Japanese. And yeah, as I mentioned, your Japanese language school can help you to apply to both Semongakkos and university programs taught in Japanese. Uh, and when it comes to programs taught in English from the beginning, we can help you to a couple of selected schools and we're working to add more schools here. Uh, one of them is Yamanashi Gakuin University. It's uh, located close to Mount Fuji. So it's a great location if you like nature and the, and the more peaceful side of Japan. Uh, and of course, living costs are up there are much, much lower than living in the heart of Tokyo. And still, if you want to go to Tokyo on the weekend, for example, it's only 90 minutes by train. So it's quite doable. You stay out in Yamanashi during the weeks and then maybe Friday evenings or Saturday morning, you go into Tokyo and can you know, have fun in Tokyo over the weekend. Uh, so what can you study at Yamanashi Gakuin University? Uh, well, at the moment they're offering four different degrees in English. And uh, much as I mentioned before, it's this kind of liberal arts subjects primarily. So you can study global business and economics. Uh, you can also study political science. And you can study interdisciplinary arts, basically different kinds of arts design, but it's not focused on one specific subject. You try a little bit of each and then you can choose some to go a bit deeper in, but it's still a quite broad bachelor's degree. Uh, or you can do Japan studies, really focus on studying Japanese culture and history. And in all these programs, there are, is a Japanese language course included in the program. 
Uh, or if you're into science, there is actually a very good option down in Kyoto to study in English, and that's at the Kyoto University of Advanced Science. Uh, so you can study high tech subjects in the heart of historic Kyoto. Uh, and they offer undergraduate and graduate degrees, everything from bachelor's to master's to even doctorates in subjects like mechatronics, robotics, mechanics, electronics, telecom and IT. So mechatronics is kind of the heart of what they do, but they teach all kind of subjects related to this. So this is a great opportunity if you're interested in tech, because Japan has always been one of the cutting edge countries when it comes to robotics, these kind of subjects. And of course, to study it in Kyoto, you really get the best of both worlds, Japanese high tech in combination with Japanese historic culture. Uh, and to study in Japan, you will need a visa. And there's a different, couple of different options there. You have the student visa, which is what you normally go for on a long-term course. So for courses that are 20 weeks or longer, we recommend that you apply for a student visa. And when you have a student visa, you can also get a work permit to work part-time up to 28 hours a week. And nowadays it's quite easy. You can actually apply for this um, per work permit already in the airport upon arrival. Uh, but to get uh, the student visa to Japan, you need to apply to your school with an L uh, at least five to six months before your course starts. Um, uh, but if you want to take a shorter language course in Japan, many nationalities can also go on visa waiver, which means, uh, yeah, it's good for short programs. You can stay in Japan usually for up to 90 days. Some nationalities might have a shorter limit and a few nationalities actually can prolong it up to 180 days. But uh, for almost all nationalities that can go to Japan on visa waiver, uh, you can stay for 90 days, then you will have to leave the country. Theoretically, you can travel back again after a while, but if you want to take a long course, we really recommend going for the student visa. Uh, otherwise, with visa waiver, of course, the good thing is that no visa application is needed at all. You just get a stamp upon arrival, but make sure to check that your nationality has a visa waiver agreement with Japan. And uh, for example, the, the US does, of course, Canada, the, the EU countries do basically, and a number of other countries too, but far from all countries have this agreement. And now, as you know, we're also still in the middle of COVID. Uh, so as of May 2021, there are still restrictions. The border is temporarily closed to Japan. Uh, probably primarily due to the Olympics that will take place this summer. So they're being extra careful there. So right now you can't even travel to Japan. Um, but uh, we think they will open again. They have been open for a big part of the pandemic on and off. And we think they will open again in the fall, maybe even like July, August sometime. But uh, first of all, they will open for students on student visas. A visa waiver might take longer uh, and uh, a two weeks quarantine will probably still be required. It, it was before when before they closed, it was open a bit earlier this year. Uh, but again, if you apply to Japan, we and or your school will give you updated information about the COVID situation. And hopefully now with vaccinations, everything that's going on, we can soon be back to a more normal standard where we don't have to worry about this anymore. Uh, and of course, with visas and with courses, there's also comes the question about costs. How much money do I need to study in Japan? And uh, well, what you need will depend on what and where you study, which school, what their tuition fee is, uh, and yeah, what your living costs will be. But basically, you will have to show that you can pay for your tuition fee and your living costs in Japan in order to get a visa to go there because the migration authorities want to make sure that the people who come in 
they come there to study and not with some other purpose and that you really can support yourself so you don't become a burden for the system in Japan. So in order to get a visa, you always need to prove that you have enough money. Uh, and looking at language schools, for a one-year language course, you usually need to prove you have at least uh, uh, 1.6 million yen. That would be about uh, close to 15,000 US dollar. Some school might be slightly lower cost depending on their tuition fee, the location, while others could be higher cost, more up to 18,000 yen or something, and are 18... 1.8 million yen, that would be. Uh, so this is an approximation. And of course, especially if you go to university, the cost can often be higher. On the other hand, you might be able to mitigate it a bit with the scholarship. But as I mentioned early on, you will need your own money to study in Japan and to get the visa. Full scholarships that cover living costs as well are quite unusual, especially for language courses and for semongaku, but even for programs in English in general. So yeah, you will need some money on your own. But the good news is there are still some scholarships you can apply for. Uh, and usually when we work with schools in Japan or other parts of the world, uh, we also ask them what they can do for our students. And that way we have got quite a lot of scholarships and discounts from our different partner schools. Uh, for example, Waseda in Tokyo, Waseda BK, the language school offers a 50% scholarship that's equal to 350,000 yen on one year Japanese language courses for Dream Study students from many nationalities. Basically, they want more Western students, so students from, uh, from Europe, from the US, North America, and so forth, get this scholarship, uh, which is the biggest scholarship I'm aware of, basically, from a language school. So that's a really good one. And then we have a number of language schools who also offer smaller discounts and scholarships to students from Korean studies, usually in the neighborhood of 70,000 yen or something like that. You have Shinjuku Japanese Language Institute in Tokyo, Samo Language School in Tokyo, and so forth. You also have ISI in Nagano and Harajuku who currently offer good discounts in, in those campuses. Uh, otherwise, for higher education, there are usually bigger scholarships available. Uh, so Yamanashi Gakuin University uh, offers uh, 25 to 100% tuition fee scholarships. So quite good ones. Uh, and the uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Science that I mentioned before have 30 to 100% tuition fee scholarships with the possibility even for a stipend for personal expenses for students with an excellent academic performance. The most of these kind of scholarships for higher education are based on academic performance. Some are also need based, but uh, so the higher, better grades you have when you apply to the school, better chance for a scholarship. And then usually you need to maintain good grades in the school to keep scholarships from semester to semester. Uh, we have a specific uh, dream study scholarship um, with deadline December 15 that you can apply uh, for all language schools we can help you with and also for Yamanashi Gakuin and Kyoto University of Advanced Science. Uh, and there are some more scholarships as well, partly on dreamstudiesabroad.com you can find all the offers we have for Japan. And we also have an article about studying in Japan where you can find some more scholarships. I think Yasso, for example, has scholarships for students who want to go to Japan. So you can read more about that there. Uh, so how do you live as a student in Japan? Uh, well, let's look at some student housing options. Uh, with our help, uh, you can book a host family accommodation in Japan, which is really what we would recommend, especially for language students. If you want to learn the language fluently, if you really want to get into the culture, at least take like a month or something in a host family and live like a Japanese, really practice your language even at home, eat great Japanese food. This is a fantastic option. Um, otherwise, share houses is a very popular option. 
basically you share an apartment with other students. Usually you would have your own room, but you would share all other facilities like kitchens, bathroom, common rooms, uh, or you have a private apartment. Uh, and then, of course, some of you might live in a country where a private apartment means some 30, 40, 50 square meters. And Japan is not one of those countries. A private apartment, student apartment, usually could be like some 10, 12, 15 square meters, like what you see on the picture here. This is basically a full private apartment, except for the small little toilet cabin in one corner. Otherwise, you would basically have a futon to sleep on, a desk, a small like kitchenette, a fridge, and here they even have a balcony. Maybe you have a, a washing machine, but yeah. Standard is usually simple and space is quite small, especially in the big cities like Tokyo. And accommodation can be booked through, the, through your language school, uh, but it can also be booked through us. We have a website called yourhomeinjapan.com where we offer discounted accommodation, both host families, share houses and private apartment. So that can be a good idea to check that out if you want more information about accommodation in Japan and want a discount there too. So finally, how to study in Japan, step by step. Uh, step one would be to fill out an info request at dreamstudiesabroad.com. So we can send you the initial information. We would send out our study abroad handbook and info sheet about studying in Japan uh, and try to find suitable schools for you based on your request. So we send you more information and find your schools. Uh, and once you've decided on which school you want to study at, you fill out the application. Uh, and as I mentioned, on student visa courses, for language courses primarily, you need to do this like five to six months before the course starts. Uh, when it comes to higher education, they usually have fixed application pro periods and deadlines. Uh, after you fill out the school application, you book your accommodation, as we have talked about. Um, and about uh, approximately 40 days before your course starts, it's time to pay for your course and then uh, get your COE, Certificate of Eligibility. It's basically, when you apply for a, a language course in Japan, you fill in a lot of papers for your language school, and then they do an initial application for you with, uh, uh, with the migration authorities in Japan. And if that gets approved, you get this certificate of eligibility, which is a paper you bring to the Japanese embassy in your home country to do the final visa application. And if you have this, you get your COE, then you have a really good chance at getting your visa. It's almost only a formality. So if you would get rejected, it's usually before you get your COE. Uh, but then because of the migration laws in Japan, the school are not allowed to send you your COE before you have paid for your course. So at this point, you will need to pay for your course for the first year there or the 20 weeks if you book that and so forth. Then, yeah, as I mentioned, you go to the Japanese embassy, apply for the visa, you book your trip and get a student insurance this is a very important step most schools will demand that you have a student insurance when you study in japan you need to show it there and if something happens while you're in japan it's vital to have an insurance uh, some schools also offer at least a healthcare insurance many japanese schools do that but make sure it's not only about healthcare when it comes to insurances uh, you might get something stolen, maybe you cause some damage in your apartment, or maybe, you know, many things can happen. You can break your leg on a hike or whatever. I <laughs> hope you don't do that, but still make sure to get an insurance. Don't get cheap on that. It's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, and we have advice on good student insurances on our website as well. Then when everything is ready, you just pack your bags and go to Japan. So, arigato gozaimasu. Uh, if you want more information, you fill out our information request form to get help. We will also send you a follow-up mail based on this presentation. And now I'm ready to take any questions you might have about studying in Japan. So just write in the chat box if you have any question. 
Uh, what's the average cost of living as a student in Japan? Uh, this will depend a lot on where you live. Obviously, it will be much higher in a city like Tokyo than if you're out in Yamanashi or Nagano or something like that. Uh, so say if we look at the uh, accommodation, uh, share house room, for example, in, um, in Tokyo might be something uh, 65 to 70,000 yen per month. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, you will have travel, you will have food and of course amusements, other kind of things you want to do. And there will uh, again be a lot um, yeah, differ a lot depending on your habits there. In Japan, you can eat quite cheaply if you, for example, go to the um, to the supermarket late at night when the food is uh, about to uh, to expire. Um, then, uh, yeah, then cost will be much lower. Um, then we have here. Uh, thank you so much for the webinar. I was just wondering, I initially wanted to do a master's in Japan under the MEX scholarship. Um, however, I was thinking about the second undergraduate degree. I'm in my mid-20s and I'm concerned about not being suitable age for Japanese undergraduate. I've already lived in Japan. I would like to go back. Uh, well, of course, in Japan is one of those countries where you often go to university um, right after right after high school, so you would be older than Japanese students, but still, if you're in your mid twenties, you're not especially old, so you could definitely go for a undergraduate degree there still. Uh, are there any sports science programs? Um, not on any our partner schools. I mean, I'm sure there's many sports science programs in Japanese. I can't straight away tell you about any sports science programs in English in Japan. There might be some, but none that I am aware of. Uh, is it possible to get COE currently with COVID? Um, yeah, you can get a COE. We actually had an, a couple of students who got their COEs quite recently, but you still can't get the the student visa to actually enter Japan. International students at the moment are not allowed to enter Japan. So yeah, it's kind of still have to wait there. Um, and um, did it take longer due to the situation? No, I think students still got their COE at the ordinary time, but they just have to wait on when they can, yeah, when they can enter Japan. Uh, so, and of course, this COVID situation changes all the time. Now they're being extra careful due to the Olympics there, and they had quite some spread and cases during the spring, but now vaccinations are picking up in Japan too. So I think at least after the Olympics, they will ease up the restrictions. So considering if you haven't applied for Japan yet, if everything goes well, there shouldn't be any problem by the time you would be able to start there. Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, what's the cheapest language school in Japan? Tuition and living costs altogether. Uh, well, as I mentioned, the um, costs for la Japanese language schools are very similar, somewhere between 740,000 yen per year up to like 900 something uh, thousand yen per year. So I would say for a one year course, that would be Vasida BK in Tokyo now, where we have the 50% scholarship, which of course cuts their total costs down to just some. Um, what is it, like 400,000 yen or something for tuition fee. I don't think you will find anything cheaper than that. And then, of course, living costs are not the cheapest in Tokyo. There will be cheaper in other locations. But still, Tokyo have a big variation. If you can live a bit further out, if you don't need so big room and so forth, it doesn't have to be so bad. Um, would it be possible to upgrade a working holiday visa to a student visa. Yeah, we didn't talk about working holiday visas, but actually um, a number of nationalities also have working holiday visas in Japan, uh, which means um, you can work and even study at language schools at least for one year in Japan, which can be a great way to get a long-term visa. 
uh, again, usually suspended now during COVID, but otherwise, um, I think it would be possible. It's a little bit gray zone. If you ask the Japanese uh, embassy, can I upgrade the working holiday visa to a student visa? They might say no, but then if you talk to your language school, they might be able to help you convert it in Japan there. Um, uh, yeah, let me see. Good morning from Seoul. Uh, I only graduated high school, no college degree. Is it still possible to attend school in Japan? Yeah, I mean, the, the prerequisite to, to get a student visa for, uh, for language schools actually don't really care about your grades at all. They teach the language to you regardless of your background. You will get a language test that will check your level and be placed in a, on a course accordingly. However, in order to get a student visa, you need to have a high school diploma. But if you have graduated from high school, you can get a student visa so you can study at a Japanese language school. And also, if you want to take an undergraduate program in Japan, a high school diploma is all you need. So definitely, you don't need the college to be able to study in Japan. As long as you graduated from high school, you're fine. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry I joined late. Um, no problem. I wanted to ask you to study for one year. Is it a long-term visa to apply for at the university? Well, if you study for one year, that would be the student visa, uh, which is the long-term visa. But then you primarily you apply to your language school and they, as I mentioned, will do the initial application for you. Uh, with the migration authorities in Japan. And if that gets approved, you will get the COE certificate of eligibility that uh, will allow you to, uh, yeah, to get the visa at the embassy in your home country. So step one is to apply to a Japanese language school. Then the final visa application in your country is what you do just like a month before your course starts, once you have the documentation from your school. Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, if you don't have any more questions now, you're very welcome to contact us later. And as I said, we will send a follow-up mail to the participants here. Um, and uh, yeah, you're always welcome to contact us and make an info request if you want help to study in Japan. And also on dreamstudiesabroad.com, you will find a big article about studying in Japan. You'll find an article about student visa to Japan. You'll find a lot of schools in Japan, FAQ section, a lot of info there. Uh, when can we come to Japan before the course starts? Um, two weeks, a month? Uh, again, as I mentioned, the um, COEs are usually issued about one and a half um, month um, before, um, uh, one and a half month before the course start. Uh, so, and then when you have your COE, you need to pay your school to get the CEO, COE, they send it to you. You go to the Japanese embassy, they probably have a two months, uh, no, not two months, two weeks about handling time. Sometimes it's quicker. Um, and once they have approved your visa, then you can go to Japan. So normally it would be yeah, a couple of weeks before the course starts. So if you want to go to Japan early, the earlier you can pay for your course, the better. Let me see. Thank you so much for all the information. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, just contact us. Otherwise, I thank you so much for attending and uh, I hope to hear from you again. Okay, bye-bye. Do you dream of studying abroad? But you're not sure how and where to go. That's why we're here. Dream studies abroad to help you out reaching your goal. So many schools from all around the world are welcoming you with their open doors. Live your dreams and travel the world. A new journey for the brighter future. Let's talk, study abroad today. Your dream is not so far.